Hi guys, in one of my recent Grandad's post bag videos I showed you I'd ordered what I thought was a set of transmitter and receiver controller chips for toy grade radio controlled cars, the TX2B and the RX2B. Unfortunately, because I didn't read the listing properly, I ended up with a set of five RX2Bs, so they're just the receiver chips. And that meant I didn't have a transmitter chip to build a nice little breadboard circuit. I wanted to build this circuit that's the test circuit that you get that shows you this on the there's lots of these different um, producers for these chips and when you go through their data sheets they usually show you this test circuit it doesn't need you to build the radio transmitter and receiver circuitry or the infrared transmitter and receiver circuitry all you need is the transmitter chip and the receiver chip and then you hit connect pin 8 on the transmitter chip to pin 3 on the receiver chip and they talk to each other let's just look and see what oh yeah that circuit board will show us Oh no. Well, this is a. <laughs> I'm getting a little bit confused there. This is actually an 8A978 chip and an 8A977 chip, but they are identical to the TX2B and the RX2B in pinouts anyway. So if we use this one, which is the TX2B, RX2B, Pin 8 would normally go to your radio frequency circuitry. So that's your transmit, goes out on pin 8. And then on the receiver, the radio frequency circuitry comes in on pin 3. So all we're doing is cutting out the radio frequency circuitry and going straight from 8 out to 3 in. The reason I had that other diagram was this one's infrared but it does the same basic thing. So, I built the circuit, but I had to improvise because I hadn't got the TX2B chip. So I took apart one of my spare transmitters. So, that's the chip. I'll do some close-ups later because I've played around with it a little bit to give us some extra facilities. But at the moment, I've got a white wire going on to pin 8. I've also got a black wire going on to pin 6, which I'll tell you about in a minute. And then I've commoned up the battery and earth, or positive and negative, and brought them across to here. So pin 8 is that white wire, which then changes to that yellow wire and goes to pin 3 on the receiver chip. So, if I press, let's have a look which way round will this be, that'll be up and down and that'll be left and right, uh, which one's which, so if I press right, I'm trying to work this out which way right, that should be right, then pin 6, it should be this one I think, yeah, so I'm pressing turn right, am I? Well, that's what it says I'm doing, it's that one, and if I press that one it should be that one, Hopefully we can see these LEDs coming up, so right, left, right, left, and then forwards and backwards will be these two, which will be these two. So that one should be 
forwards, that one's backwards, forwards, backwards, and then what I've done, which the original transmitter doesn't have, is I've added in the turbo button, which goes to pin 6 on that one, and if I press that button, that light should come on. And there we go. So this is without using any radio transmission, we're just using the signal out from the transmitter chip to go directly to the signal in on the receiver chip. Now I will go in a bit closer, but we probably won't be able to see much. Right, we're looking at the transmitter chip now, and pin 8 is the one that I've soldered that white wire on directly. And pin 6 is the one that I've got that black wire soldered onto directly. That black wire goes through that little button, just a spare button I had laying around. Button, push switch, momentary push switch. And then that goes onto that orange wire. And the orange wire I've just got soldered onto the, um, which is that, positive or negative? negative bar. So that's just so that I can push negative when I press that button. That goes directly into pin 6 there. And then on the receiver chip, oh, this is a bit messy to look, try and look at, see if I can get the wires out of the way. Right, uh, counting along the bottom, one, two, three, there's a yellow wire there going on to pin three. Unfortunately, I've also used yellow wires on pin four and five. Four and five go to this pot potentiometer so that we can adjust the, the frequency. Now, that's not your 27 megahertz or your um, 40 megahertz frequency. That's the actual frequency of the signal. Uh, what can we show you? Hang on, let's zoom out again. frequency which is actually where are we 128 kilohertz that frequency is the frequency of these signals nothing to do with 27 megahertz 40 megahertz 35 megahertz this is the uh, I'm trying to think of the best ways to explain it. The code, the actual number, bits and bytes. The 27 megahertz, 35 megahertz, 40 megahertz. When you're talking about that, you're talking about the radio frequency circuitry which has nothing to do with that chip directly. So, that's it. I only wanted to see if I could do it, and I can. It would have been nicer if I could have had the, the transmitter chip next to it and we could have seen it all nicely laid out. But I've had to improvise, as I say, and take one of my transmitters apart and I've implemented the turbo. So I might actually put this transmitter back together and fit that little turbo button into the case somewhere so I can use it if I ever want to try one out that has a turbo feature. Job done. <laughs>